Okay, just getting a few things together here. Hello, Jennifer and Paulette. Greetings. We're going to wait just a couple minutes and uh, see if some other people hop on. Hi, Bev. Um, okay. All righty. Hello, Diane. Hello, Therese. Glad you could make it today. Hi, Annette. Okay. I have so much stuff to show you guys. Um, as always, I never know where to begin. So hopefully I don't uh, bumble around too much, but uh, just bear with me and we'll get through this. I'll wait just another minute. I don't want people to miss the beginning, although they can replay it, I suppose. So I guess maybe I should get started then. Um, okay, well, first off, I'd like to say thank you for joining me. And um, I'm going to be doing some uh, resin today. Uh, I, honestly, I haven't done resin in a long, long time. So a lot of this stuff I have, um, it's old, but it can be new again. It, it's really uh, something that I don't think ever really goes old. Um, it, and it's fun. It can be relatively inexpensive. Uh, it just depends on, um, you know, how far down the rabbit hole you want to go. So let's see. Yeah, Therese, I miss it too. I miss having live classes. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this stupid thing will be over soon, I hope. I, well, it doesn't look like it's going to be, but it sure would be nice, and then we could all get together again and, uh, and have some fun. It's very isolating when you can't, you know, get together with your friends. So, yeah, I think we all get that and all miss it, so... Okay, um, I am going to show you uh, some of the things. I'm going to flip this camera down a little bit. And you'll have to let me know if, um, if you can't see things or if, if you can hear okay. Uh, I'm totally in the dark with this stuff, so I don't have anybody to help me. So uh, not that I need help, but, you know, it, with the technology, it, get, it can be a little bit... Uh, intimidating at times. Anyway, here are uh, a variety of different pieces that I've made over the years. And um, just to show you how versatile resin can be, uh, you can put all kinds of little embellishments inside, like say this little steampunk theme, for example. The background's a little bit dark on here, but um, you know, live and learn. I, I should have had something a little bit brighter in the back. But you can embed all kinds of fun little things. This is a pretty large piece um, and maybe not suited for everyone, but it's just mainly to demonstrate the different things that you can do. And here's another very large piece, but I think it's very pretty. This has little um, glass millefiori pieces in there, and um, I think that's kind of fun. 
And also, here's another one that's also, again, a dark background. But this has got um, one of these poppy, dried poppy seed, I guess, that you'd call it, embedded in there. So things can uh, be raised above the resin. You can just put a coating on top, so that way everything is sealed in there. And it also has a layer of uh, glitter on the bottom, which I'll show you, which is kind of fun. It's a nice little element. Um, and also, these particular resin bezels were from Susan Leonard Kasmer's line. Um, I think it was Art Mechanic. Could have been Art Mechanic or, no, let me see. Media Mixage. There we go, Media Mixage. Now these, I don't know, I don't think that these are still available um, in her product line. You may still find them like places on uh, Etsy or eBay. Uh, they're kind of fun. I like the fact that they've got those little knobs all the way around the, the bezel cups. Um, but uh, she had a whole line of this media mixage stuff. I, I know it's backwards, but um, just a whole line of different things that were really kind of fun. And I had bought all those little different things and uh, looked online the other night to see if I could find them to show uh, references on where you could get them. And uh, they're no longer in her product lineup that I could find. So if you do look for them, uh, let me know if you, if you find them. Uh, because I would like to add those to the resources. Um, but there are also other bezel cups that you can buy. These are by Nun Design. And you can go to the Nun Design website and uh, see what they have as far as bezel cups. And they also have resin and different things available. And then there is another nifty... Okay, so... You saw these little things, and all these things on the media mixage, you can make a bracelet or, or different things. And then there's these little, uh, just cubes. These are these little tiny ones are none design as well. They, where are they? You know, as good as I planned. Oh, I'll show you in a minute. But um, these other little squares, these are by a company called Little Windows. And uh, they have a whole product line for resin uh, makers. And they have lots of good tutorials, too, I wanted to mention. Uh, so this is just a little taste of, of what's out there. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to put this aside and get my other tray. And this is... Um, well, these are how the Nun Design bezels come, or at least how they came when I got them. But uh, these are a great size for earrings. They also make uh, the same bezel cup that has a loop on either side, so you can link them together for a bracelet. Uh, this is also Susan Leonard Kasmer's line. This is Art Mechanique, which are just like the media mixage, but packaged a little bit differently. And then there's various other companies that make bezels, resin bezels. These are very shallow, though, so you really can't embed anything other than some clip art in there. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, there's also bottle caps. I know that many of you might think that's kind of cheesy, but... As jewelry, yeah, I'd have to agree, but if you wanted to do like some little refrigerator magnets or something, uh, you can certainly do that. There are um, tons of different possibilities that you can do that and put a little magnet on the back. And these again are none design bezels as well. Some of them are two-sided. But with the two-sided ones, you have to keep in mind that they're shallow. So they're good for a photograph or uh, some clip art on either side. Makes it reversible. But you're limited 
some of these you're limited as to far as far as uh, putting things in there. And then you can also use just copper shapes. You can glue your clip art to them. I'm going to show you what I did with a couple of them this morning as I was uh, trying to think of more things to show you. Okay, um, then as I mentioned little windows, that is a whole product line of resin. And I have to say, before I forget, that their resin is different uh, as far as uh, the formulation. As far as I know, all resin, or the resin I've used all along, is two-part, uh, an A and a B type, uh, uh, where you put equal parts of both and mix them in, and then they harden. But with little windows, it's a two-to-one ratio. So that's a little bit different. So if you're going to use their product, I mean, you have to read the directions for everybody's products, really. But um, there's just more um, opportunities out there. So this is made, this little bird here was made with one of these little molds. These are um, little plastic molds. They're not very heavy. And the idea with these is once they are set, then you just give the, the little mold a twist. They're pretty durable. And then the resin piece pops out. You can trim these around the edges. You can sand them. Uh, if you take the shine off after you're done, you can just touch it up with a little bit of resin on the edges and let it set again. You can also drill through these with no problem. I used a little twist drill and made a hole in there. And there you go with that. So let me look and see if there's any questions because I think there are a few. And then I'll continue. Let's see here. Hello, Deb, Paulette, Linda, Diane. Hey, Melody, I'm glad you made it. Okay, well, you can always replay if you missed anything. Okay, just kind of going over basic uh, basic things. All right, I'm out of here. Okay, back to the table. So with the little windows, and I'm not promoting any of these people necessarily. I'm just letting you know what's available. Uh, with the little window system, they, it comes with uh, different shape resin bezels or molds, I should say, and also templates so that you can cut your clip art accordingly. Lots of different pieces. Okay. They also have a pouring mat that I will show you in a little bit. Uh, there's one that I recommend over the other, but those are some options. Now, what other options are there? Oh, um, you can, as far as clip art goes and things, or background papers, uh, I have a lot of um, scrapbook background papers. I used to do a lot of this stuff. I don't really do it so much anymore since I got more into metalwork. But there's lots of different um, papers that you can use as your backgrounds. Um... A lot of times they have these things on sale. That's the time to pick them up. Uh, and let's see what else. So there's that. There's smaller stacks that have lots of different backgrounds. They have some really pretty ones in there too. So those are just a few options as far as backgrounds are concerned. Now, oh, too much stuff. Then we get into clip art. Let me put this one away. Okay, then there are more toys. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's start here. There are pieces that you can buy 
like at uh, the craft stores that have already sized images. These will fit in a bottle cap. And these, I don't know the brand on this. I don't have the, the label. Um, these are by Pidex, and I will have all these resources for everybody um, listed. And it'll be in the files where the other ones are. These are perfect to, to fit in these little, um, oh, like for the little earrings. I don't know if you can see that. But they're from here. They're basically from here. And so Etsy's a great place. Uh, that's where I found Pidix. And they also have, they have tons and tons of clip art, digital clip art. And these little birds, I think, are really sweet. They're very colorful. And then these trees, I, I really like these. So you download, you know, the images, and then you print them on uh, an inkjet printer. And I just pick and choose whatever I want and uh, kind of go from there. So that's clip art. But Etsy is, is probably my biggest source for where I buy clip art. And once you buy it, you know, I create a file for it in um, Microsoft Word. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I always have those available. I can print as many as I want. All right, so that's a little bit on clip art. Then, and you can use, you know, um, other templates, any kind of templates that you have for your shapes, you can use. It just kind of helps out. The other thing, other than templates, are paper punches. And these are pretty neat. These are different sizes and shapes. This particular one, I'm not really sure on the size. It could be like 7 eighths of an inch. But I wrote on here bottle cap size. This is the perfect one for uh, bottle caps. I don't know where I got it, but it was at a craft store, no doubt. But yeah, there's tons of different, different uh, shapes, sizes, and um, that's another option. Okay, now back to this table, my tray. These are uh, clip art from Nun Design. These trees, I really like these a lot. I've used these a lot in, in my work. They have two different kinds. They have just the kind that you can put inside a bezel, or you can do the water slide transfer also on top of resin, which I will hopefully remember to explain that as well. You can also do this computer paper. It's kind of like a transparency. It's uh, made by graphics. And what you can do with that, if you can see, is I used my stays on ink. This is a permanent die and rubber stamps. So you can get different designs on here. You can do words, phrases. You can embed all of this stuff in resin. It's it's pretty amazing when you think about it, uh, the versatility of this particular technique. So there's that. Then there are rub-ons. That is another fun thing to get into that you can put on top of your resin. And let me show you what I mean by that. This little bee and this little bird are both rub-ons. And if you're not familiar with what that is, what a rub-on is, is you would cut whatever image appealed to you and the right size for your shape that you're going to put it on. You just trim around there and you have your prepared piece and you take that piece and put it on top, put your little 
rub on. I'll just cut a little piece off here. And just trim around it. Doesn't have to be trimmed real good because you're just transferring the image on there. What did I get on me already? Oh, okay. So I'm just going to put it on the back side here just to show you. And you just lay it on your piece. And I use a popsicle stick and just, of course, I should be on the table firmly. And you just rub it all over. Now, this is the thing with rub-ons is when you're going to do your resin, <clears throat> a nice thing to do is if you have one of the deeper bezels, you could, um, well, I'll just use a bottle cap for example. This has got some nice depth to it. So what I would do is pour about half of the resin that this would hold in here and let it set. It takes about 12 hours uh, to cure, but really I would give it 24 just to be sure that it's set well. But anyway, it once that layer is set, then you can put your transfer on top of that and rub that transfer on real well and then pour another layer of resin on top and it gives it a nice dimension. Um, it, I guess you have to see it to, to understand, but maybe, I don't know. But anyway, that's that's what you would do with that. So, okay. So you just rub that on there. And then peel off the paper and then your image is on there. I know there's glare from the lights down here, but it's on there. Okay. So backing up a bit on this B that I did, this was one of my experiments this morning. I took the bare copper, just a bare copper disc that I had and put a layer of vintage patina on it. I wanted to see if there would be any bad reaction to, to this and the resin on top of it, and there was not. I just had to wait a while for this to dry thoroughly. Then I put the rub on on, and then I put a layer of resin over it. Now, to further complicate the mix, I used a UV resin this morning with this particular disc, which I hadn't mentioned yet. Um, and, and I only did that basically was because I wanted to have it ready to show you. And since I did it this morning, it wouldn't be ready till tomorrow. So I used a UV resin with this, which I will tell you about. So I did that. It worked fine. So that is something uh, it, I would recommend because it does work. And then I took another piece of copper and I used my Impress Arts Pen with that. Put two layers of that on here, let it dry thoroughly. Then I cut out one of the little birds from the Nun Design sheet right here. I cut out one of those birds and I adhered him with um, some Mod Podge, let that dry, and then I put the UV resin over that, and that worked just fine. So that's another option. Uh, it's something that I hadn't played with before, but when I was laying in bed last night, I was thinking of different things that I know people do with resin that I hadn't explored yet, and um, this is just another thing. And another one, this is a little bit of a fail, but uh, it's the first one that I did. And this I took square copper wire and just made a ring with it. Just 
just made a ring like this. And I laid it on a piece of packing tape. And I had a little sheet of these pressed flowers. These aren't really what I want to use for this particular thing. They've got a coating on them. Uh, and I don't even remember what I bought these for. It was just in a box with a bunch of other stuff that I had. Um, but I peeled one of those off and I pressed it on top of the packing tape. And then I put a layer of resin on there, the UV resin. And it worked, except I didn't let it sit long enough and a bubble came up to the top. And I didn't notice that when I put it in the UV light. So I've got a permanent bubble inside there. So that is something that could have been prevented had I looked, but, um, but I didn't. I was in a hurry and I just wanted to see if these things would work. And that's what happened. Anyway, so um, I cured it with the UV light and then I peeled it off the paper or the, the tape and turned it over and pressed it on there and put another layer of resin on top of there. So this is very doable. Uh, you can um, drill a little hole in there or I could have taken the time to make a little bale. I didn't. This was basically just to show you different possibilities. So you just want to make sure that your when you put it on the tape that you press it down firmly all the way around so that the resin doesn't pour out from underneath. So that's another option. Okay, so let me see, where am I at here? So I showed you those things. Oh, let me show you some of the resin. I'll put this back here. Okay, primarily what I use these days is ice resin. I know it's backwards, but it's ice resin. This is what I like. Uh, this is my resin of choice. It's a little bit pricey, but it's worth it. You can buy bigger containers. Uh, it comes in different sizes, but also at the craft stores, they sell, I believe it's Envirotex, Envirotex Light, or some other kinds of two-part uh, resins. And they work fine in the very beginning, many years ago, uh, when I was first pursuing resin making, uh, that's what I bought and I used it. I liked it. But then after I tried the ice resin, I just liked it a whole lot better. It dries very clear. Um, it doesn't yellow and uh, it's just, it's good stuff. The other is the, um, the other that I use. So I just use the ice resin now for the standard, uh, resin making or the UV cure is something I got on Amazon and uh, it's Lamino. I've never heard of that before. It was, uh, it says fast curing, self degassing, high gloss. Well, the degassing, I don't know about because it, it still had a bubble in it, but really for the most part, that was my fault. Uh, it's, this has been real good stuff. So with the curing, um, I use that a lot. You know, I make a lot of uh, lampwork cabs, and sometimes there are little uh, defects in the glass on the back side, and I hate to sell them like that. I so I'll take this um, this uh, fast cure stuff, and I can just put uh, put it in a little um, dispenser and kind of just push that in those little uh, voids in the glass and. Uh, and put it in the uh, light box and it cures right away and it, it works out really well. The, um, the resin light that I use, I believe it's just like a manicurist uh, box, UV light box. And it just comes on there like that. And it has a self timer in here. It's not very long. It's maybe like a minute or a minute and a half. 
and um, and I usually turn this back on like three or four times, and it's probably I don't know I don't think I don't think it's overkill, but I think it needs a few times under the light because it's not very long, and you can kind of test a little piece, kind of touch it lightly, and and you can feel that it might still be just a tiny bit tacky, so um, I would just. I'd be doing other stuff and I just press the light back on and it's no big deal. But but that's that. And honestly, I can't remember where I got this either, but probably from Amazon or something similar. Uh, I don't think you have to pay a lot of money for them. I think you can probably get them fairly reasonable, just shop around a little bit. So those are the two resins that I use. Um, what else? I use Mod Podge. This is wonderful stuff for, for this um, technique. This acts as a glue and also as a sealer. Whenever I do any of the clip art, I put a coat of the uh, Mod Podge on the paper, on the front and the back. That seals the paper so it doesn't um, like the colors don't fade or not fade, but run in the resin. I've, I've not had that problem, but I do know that if you don't seal the paper, it will look like it has wet spots in there. And once that resin is set, it, those wet spots remain in there. So that doesn't look very good. So it's, it's not a big deal to just, uh, to seal it up with that. So then there are what we would call inclusions that you can add to your resin pieces if you want to. There are lots of fun things that are available in craft stores, and I've just been accumulating junk for a long, long time. And let's see, where did my tweezers go? Oh. Here, I've got one more tray. All right, along with the inclusions, well, I'll just do that. Here's my tweezers. Okay, so there are lots of fun little things. Uh, these alphabet letters are stick-on if you wanted to put an initial or something in there. These are craft store finds, too. Um, I'm just showing you what's out there. I mean, everybody's taste is different. Uh, if this is just fun stuff. This is fun jewelry. Uh, you can use cup chain. There's tons of different kinds of cup chain, different colors, uh, different sizes that you can line your bezel with if you like blingy stuff. That's in there. Uh, there are... And most of this stuff, well, not the cup chain, but a lot of the stuff that's in my box here are, are scrapbooking things. Uh, there are arrows and cogwheels. Uh, here's a moon and an owl. On something like this, you can just, that little loop, you can just snip that off with your wire cutters. That's doable. There are um, clocks, just all kinds of stuff. There's uh, bats. You could do themes. You could do like holiday themes. Uh, I did put this one together that is just a simple little thing. This has got a Halloween paper on the background, scrapbook paper on the background that I uh, glued on with the Mod Podge and then put a layer of uh, Mod Podge over it to seal that paper. And then I glued on the little bat with some Mod Podge. And then I will um, pour some resin over him in a little while. But, I mean, for a little Halloween thing, it's cute. For kids and stuff, it's kind of fun, too. Uh, but anyway, there, there's lots of little things. There's little, little Eiffel Towers and things that say Paris. You know, there's just um, this fun stuff. Other little cogwheels. There are numbers which you can put in there. Just little things to add interest. So 
there's that. Oh, there's a little wishbone. You could put that in there. And my favorite inclusion are little millefiori, little glass pieces. And there's tons of different varieties of these, and I'll show you how I use them. Okay. Okay. And little flowers. There's there's just a bunch of stuff. Skull and crossbones. So that's inclusions. All right. Then, there's another tray. And I've got my little dish of millefiori here. Then there are glitters. I know people, as soon as you say glitter, they, they shudder because glitter gets everywhere. But this one isn't, these aren't bad. These are also another ice resin product. Uh, different colors, they're really pretty. This is glass glitter. This is not craft store glitter. If you use craft store glitter, it has a tendency to float up. Once you put the glass glitter in place, it stays where you put it. And that's really kind of neat. That is, I think, well, you can see it on this. You can see the resin, I mean the glitter down here. And that's just kind of a fun look. So these come in lots of different colors. Also, uh, silver, pink, purple. So there's that. There are also, um, there's the ice resin too, out of the box. Okay, um, oh, got some on me. That's the other thing is when you use your bottles, make sure you wipe them off because that stuff can leak out and get on your skin and it won't hurt your skin necessarily, but it's uh, very sticky and it's hard to get off. There are also resin colorants. These are also ice resin products that you can make. Uh, they actually, to me, they look just like alcohol inks. And you, you, you can use alcohol inks as well. But you have to be careful in your ratio of um, amount of ink towards your, uh, to your resin because if you use too much, you're going to change the... Um, the composition of the resin and it's not going to dry right. So that's something to consider as well. There's also a, a product called Crass, Casting Craft. These are color pigments and you use just a tiny, tiny little bit, like the tip of a toothpick, into your resin mix. These are opaque color. I, I tend to like the opaques better than the transparents, but and these alcohol inks are transparents or whatever they are. But I, I really think that they must be very similar, if not the same, as uh, alcohol inks. Uh, but you can get lots of nice effects with those two. And there again, there's tons of information online <clears throat> about doing that that way. So anyway, so this, this these are nice. Um, I mixed a tiny little dot of the blue and then a bigger dot of the white and got a really pretty robin eggs blue with that and uh, I like that a lot. Okay, so there's that. There are the millefiori. There's lots of different sizes of that. Um, and let's see. Let's see if there's any other questions and then I'll keep going. How many minutes in the UV oven? Well, I think I think I might have covered that by saying that um, I think that the UV uh, box is probably about a minute timed wise, but um, I do it several times. So I'd say probably five minutes would be good on the UV. And actually, I guess if I looked at the box, it would tell me. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Oh, okay. This is says this one says two to four minutes on this one, but it also is sun curing. So you could put this outside on a sunny day, exposed in the sunlight for five to twenty minutes. So that's kind of neat um, if you didn't want to um, invest in in a uh, resin light. Okay. 
Yeah, and doing it in layers is really the proper way to do it if you're going to do something thick. That is uh, something else to keep in mind. Okay, so let me get a few things out here. And then I'll actually put a piece together. All right, let me see. I've been wanting to... Could I use the larger pieces as a key fob? No, they, Therese, they, would, they should be fine. They should be fine. The, um, the resin, I mean, if you're using it on a keychain, it may scuff up a little over time, but you can also clean it. Uh, you can, I mean, po polish it. And uh, actually, I saw on the littlewindows.com uh, website, um, they recommend a particular polishing cream that uh, I watched the demo on it, and it, it polished up just like brand new. So that is an option. So that, that's possible. Uh, Lisa Pavelka's UV, have I used it? I have not. Uh, I know I've got some of the clip art, but I don't have the uh, the resin itself. I was wondering if you have used UV. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Deb, I will have a list of, of all the uh, the stuff that I'm using today. Have I experienced problems with your resin adhering to silver or clay? No, I have not. Everything I've put resin on has worked. So um, I can't say. Unless it had some moisture in it or something, uh, I can't see any reason for that to fail. All right, let's see. What else? Okay, so I think, oh, the other thing, as long as we're showing stuff, is for little windows, when you buy their kit, my gosh, they were up at Beaten Button years ago and that's where I saw them they were doing demos and I thought well I've got to add this to my my uh I don't know my repertoire I guess anyway in the kit I can't remember if I bought things separately or if they came in the kit but um they have several different kinds of resin trays where you set your pieces on top to let your uh, resin cure and I guess I picked this up up there and I used it a lot I've got tons and tons of resin that from overfill that dripped onto here and that's always bugged me I, I don't like that as long as the points are still up you know you can still place your stuff on there but um, it really is just kind of a nightmare but anyway, um, sometime after that, I went back on their website and they came up with this nifty little thing. It's like silicone. And it's got the little nubs where, you know, you just put this like on a cookie sheet or something just to make it stable. And then it's got all the little nubs on here that you lay all your little bezel cups filled with resin. And if you overfill, it spills into these little grooves but then when it's dry when it's all dry you just turn it over and just pick out the dried resin and uh, I don't know it's it's just to me that was much worth the money more so than the other thing so this one seems pretty indestructible so there's that and when you're uh, when you've poured all your resin and you're done filling your bezel cups, you need to leave it alone, undisturbed for like 12 hours at least. Like I said before, uh, 24 is better. But once you have all your resin cups on that mat or wherever you're going to place them, then I cover it. I've got a plastic lid and I just cover it over it, but I leave it up. I let air get under it. I just give it a little bit of, um, you know, like the width of a pencil or something, you know, just put one on each end and then you can just keep, keep it raised so it has a little bit of air flow in here. But the purpose of this is to keep dust and any pear, uh, pet hair that might be floating around 
uh, you don't want that landing on your resin and then that just kind of ruins the whole thing. So there's that. Okay. So when I go to, uh, let's see. All right, let me back down here. Whoa, get back here. I think you're gonna fall out here. Okay. <coughs> here, drink. Okay. So to build the resin, what I did here <clears throat> this is kind of a repeat of what I've done. I'm going to take a little bit of the Mod Podge and pour it in a little condiment cup. A little bit really goes a long way. You need a paintbrush. I like to use a flat paintbrush. This one happens to be angled. It doesn't really make any difference. It's just what I grabbed, but a flat paintbrush. And I keep water around too for the paintbrush because the Mod Podge, once it dries on your brush, uh, your brush is toast. You're, you're not going to use it again. It, it's just the way it is. So you want to just kind of wipe it off. Um, what else? Oh, okay. So when I'm preparing my piece, say I wanted to, and I'm not going to actually do this particular piece. Where did my scissors go? Oh well. All right, I'm just gonna cut this guy off. Actually, it probably would have been easier if I just left it on here, which I'll just use one of these others, only just for grabbing it or holding on to it. Oh, I'm falling apart. Okay, um, here's my brush, here's my Mod Podge. And I hope you can see okay. And I'm just going to brush the Mod Podge on. And brush it out so that you're not seeing big brush lines. I mean, it's not any big deal. but uh, And I also, let's see. I will also coat the back. Now I thought at one point um, that I'd be real smart and I'd take all these sheets that I had um, printed on my printer, all the clip art, and I'd Mod Podge the whole sheet and uh, save time that way. Well, I did that with several different uh, sheets of clip art and then I stacked them all on top of each other and put them away. They were dry. But then I went to uh, use them sometime later and they were all stuck together. And they all just ripped apart because they were stuck. All right, so I'm not letting this dry fully, but you get the idea. I, I coated it on both sides. I'm going to trim it out. It dries pretty quick. Little bird. And I guess what I should do is I'm going to do this. I could do it this way too. If I have the bezel already ready, I guess I could just take some of the Mod Podge. That might have been a little too much. You can go around the edges of the bezel, inside edges, and coat that. I don't want it on the top, but you can coat that. This is actually a smarter way to do that. And then I've got my little piece that I'm going to put in here and set that down. And then I take a handy dandy eraser on a pencil and just push that down. so that it's firmly attached to the bottom. Okay. And I'm just cleaning up that inside just a little bit. Okay. 
All right. So I'll just let that dry for a couple minutes. If you have a cup warmer or a dehydrator that you use for, in your crafts, you could set those in there. It will make your drying time very much quicker. You could probably use a heat gun if you wanted to, lightly. I'd be careful with that. Okay, and let that dry. I'll fill up this other one too. As soon as this bottom dries a little bit, then I'll coat the top with the Mod Podge. But I'm going to go ahead and just paint the inside with the glue or Mod Podge. Stick my little birdie in there. And you want to make sure that you put your clip art in the orientation that you want it to end up as. Okay, so I'll put that in there. Kind of tamp it down a little bit with the eraser so that it's in there. All right, and just for sake of time, I'm going to put a little Mod Podge on the top of this guy. just to seal it. And then I'm going to add a few little Millefiori pieces in here because I really like that. I'm going to rinse my brush. I know with paint brushes you're not supposed to really be pushing them down and tamping them out, but um, Hey, this is just a Mod Podge brush, so it's not an expensive sable brush or camel hair brush or something, so so that's okay. And then as this dries, I'll give it a little fan, too, to just make sure that it's not stuck together. Because I've gone through lots of brushes uh, not remembering to dry them out, or wash them out, I mean. Okay, so I've got my glue. Oh, well, I didn't do the top of this guy, so here we go. Just put a little film of that on there. Okay, back in the drink. Okay, so I'm going to put my eyeballs on here and get my little Millefiori's out. This one I already did. I glued these little guys on there, if you can see. And basically that's all I'm doing again is picking. Since this one is so small, I can only get a few pieces in there. And I'll just pick up the Millefiori, dip it ever so lightly in the Mod Podge and then place it down where I want them. These will take a little bit longer to dry because of the, uh, the you always get a little, little bit more of the Mod Podge on there than you really need or want, but um, it just, that's the way it is. Okay, so I just, just put a few little pieces in there and I'll let those dry. Now with the bird, I don't think I'm going to put anything in with him. I, I, I like it just the way it is. And so you just, like I said, let those dry. And then what I will do is get my glass glitter ready. And what I'll do is mix up enough for this guy. You guys have any other questions? If I'm going too fast, uh, let me know. Okay. Oh, you get to see my eyeballs. Um, I need a haircut bad, guys. 
it's terrible. COVID hair. All right. Um, okay, no other questions. All right, well, I'm just going to pour this guy, and that way you can kind of see how I'm doing it. I'll pour that and then this little bat. So I'm going to put these guys over to the side. Like that. They're just cute. All right. Thanks, Melody. I'm always nervous doing these, but this one, this one this time, um, actually is not bad. I think it's getting better. My nerves. All right. So I'm going to get myself set up here. And I'm going to pour in a little bit. I guess I should have done this. I guess I'll do this on a paper towel. A little spoon would be nice. A little teeny tiny one. Oh well, I'll just pinch up a little bit. Just, can you see what I'm doing? I'm just pouring in. Ooh, I like that blue. It's really pretty. Pretty blue. <clears throat> you can put in as much or as little as you want. I'm just, I kind of just impartial to this. A dry brush would have been good, too. Let's see. I think this one's stuck. Yeah, but let's see. Okay. I just move it around a little bit with a dry brush. Sometimes less is more. I mean, people say that, and it is really true, at least in my experience. So that's as much as I'm going to put in there, okay? But I like it. Okay. Thank you, Jan. Yeah, um, I've been around the block a time or two, but I'm always learning stuff, too. Oh, there's a... Big hair here. I don't want to get that in my... Eesh. Okay. So, as far as I'm concerned, these two guys are ready to, to make a mix. Cover up my glitter before I spill it, because that will inevitably happen. Okay, so now for pouring the resin. Having these little medicine cups uh, are wonderful. When you buy a kit of the resin, they come with some, but there's never enough. Uh, you can find these easily enough uh, on Amazon. I always mark my line where I want it to, to be the fill line because I find that once I put the resin in here, I can't really see those lines anymore. Maybe some people can, but I sure as heck can't. So um, I, I actually think this is more than I need. So I'll lower my line. Oh, what the heck. I'll just do it. I'll do a full mix. The next thing is putting on gloves. You need to have gloves on. Because this is a messy, a messy thing. I always want to say bend over when I put these on. Because I'm bad. Okay, so <laughs> sorry guys, but you know, you know, if you know me, I'm I'm just a little weird that way. Okay, all right. So, oh, Jello shots, yeah, yeah, that that those work for those. Make sure that they're nothing, no fuzz or dust or anything in the cups, and. And here's another thing. I think that um, they claim that this stuff doesn't go bad, but I think it does. I think over time, this um, this thing gets they get darker and darker um, yellow on this one. The the other one, whichever this is, the part A always seems to stay just fine, 
but this part B, the hardener, uh, I, I think it turns over time. So I would say, I would recommend, don't buy huge quantities at one time, just so um, you don't have any waste. Because the stuff's not cheap and uh, you don't really want to waste it. Okay, so I'm going to pour... That really is overkill. That's too much. It is really important to measure accurately. You need to have the exact amounts of both parts. If you have too much of one, your uh, resin is not going to cure properly. What happens is it stays in the sticky stage and never progresses. You can um, wait 10 years and it's going to be the same. So um, if you're able to weigh it, if you have like a little gram scale or something, you could do that. Um, but really making sure that you have the exact amounts um, from the get-go is the right way to do it. Put your lids back on. This one I messed up, so I need to wipe that off. Okay. Then you need a timer. You also need a straw, just a regular drinking straw. Um, here's my timer. I'm going to set it for two minutes. And I'm going to pour, oh, my popsicle stick. You need a popsicle stick. Some of the kits come with little stirring spatulas too. Um, it, it's okay, but a popsicle stick or a craft stick is, is just fine. So you pour one into the other making sure that you get all of the one that you're pouring in, pouring out, I should say, uh, into the other cup. Get it all. And the reason um, that you glue down your, your craft work and stuff uh, is if you don't, um, the edges sometimes of the clip art will lift up once you pour the resin in there. So that kind of just uh, eliminates that possibility. So I'm going to start my timer for two minutes. You're going to stir gently. You don't want to create any more bubbles than are already going to form. I could probably fill up 10 bezels with this stuff. Oh well. It's probably not a bad idea um, when you mix this stuff to have a few little, maybe bottle caps or something handy. Just uh, you could make some little refrigerator magnets or whatever with the with the extra stuff, just so there's no waste. Scrape around the sides and the bottom, and make sure you're mixing everything evenly and slowly. And with the ice resin, it recommends that you leave the uh, resin sit for five minutes after you mix it. I am not going to wait five minutes, only because I'm doing the demo. Uh, but when you're doing this on your own, you should follow the instructions. And... Uh, you'll have uh, better chances of success. So, Will that dry clear? Yes, it will. Um, it will. But it's better, like I said, I've had this sitting around for quite a long time. So, um, uh, I, I just didn't feel the need to run out and buy new stuff uh, just for the demo. I guess maybe I'm bad. I don't know. 
maybe cheap is more like it. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, it'll be fine. I did a couple the other day and they were, they were fine with this resin. Okay, so. Okay, I'm timer challenged. Okay, here we go. I'll set it for two minutes just for, uh, just for the heck of it. So if you have any other questions while I'm drying, let's see here. Make sure I don't have any resin on my fingers. Have I ever used the epoxy dome and resin kit from real? I have not. I have not. I have just been doing it this way and it seems to be working okay. <clears throat> but there are lots of other things out here. Uh, just because I'm doing it this way doesn't mean you have to. Uh, I'm just presenting what I know about resin and um, I guess in the scope of things maybe it's not really a whole lot but um, there's just a lot out there. I was amazed when I was looking uh, Online, I looked at Pinterest last night and um, saw all kinds of amazing things that people are doing with resin. So I'm kind of behind, I guess, in that respect. But, you know, it, it's hard to do all the things that I do uh, and, and give each one um, equal time. So uh, I've kind of, like I said, been kind of in a jag with metalwork and my lamp working. Uh, for the last couple years, so I haven't really done too much of this other stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I want to present different things to you every week so that, uh, you know, you're exposed to different things, and not every technique is for everybody. Uh, there are things that you're going to find uh, you like better than other things, um, but, you know, it, it's, it's just something that uh, is helping me keep my sanity during this COVID time. And, um, and I'm happy to share what I know with you. Okay, so I just waited two minutes on here. And I'll go back down here. All right. So the other thing about resin is it's self-leveling, meaning that uh, as long as you're not dumping your resin on there, it usually goes to the edge of a piece and goes no further. Okay, so for this little guy, well, maybe I'll start with this guy. All right, so I'm keeping the, uh, the bezel flat and pouring it in. And it's going on top of the glitter now, and the glitter is not moving. That's what I really like about this glass glitter. It, it stays where you put it. And I'm going to fill this guy up. I should put him down, really. All right. Well, my big fat thumb went in there. That wasn't good. So I got a little drip on the side, but that's okay. So I'm going to fill this up to the point where it looks like it's too much. And I don't think it went to the very tip. Okay, there we go. Here's the thing, if you do spill over, you can take, um, well, I wanna say a craft knife, but not really, because you're gonna scratch your bezel. A craft knife is a little bit too sharp, but I do have um, like a, um, I guess they'd call it a knife, a knife, uh, a watch knife. It's uh, not quite as sharp point, but you can actually scrape it a little bit and let that stuff pop off. Usually what I'll do is I'll get down on, on my knees on the floor 
and kind of eyeball this to see if I have a little bit of a dome because that's what I want. And sometimes it looks like um, like you have enough when you're looking from above, but when you look from the side, it's really not. So I'm going to do the little bat guy here. You see how um, I overshot estimated uh, the, the amount of resin that I needed by a lot. Okay. The resin brings out the color in the paper too. Okay, I'm just going to try to fill those corners up a little bit. And you know, um, you can, like I said before, you can drill through this with a twist drill if you didn't, um, you don't want to put a hole in it uh, prior because your resin's going to spill out through that hole. So um, you can use a little twist drill and um, drill right through the resin and the copper, no problem. Or you can glue on uh, a bale. There are glue-on bales, which I have one sitting right here. I'm not a big fan of these, but for certain applications, uh, they work. You know, you just use some E6000 and, and uh, glue that onto a piece. Or you can make your own bezels. You can, you can certainly do that um, and have, have their own bale on them. Or you could do a flat piece of metal like this and just um, solder on a bale to it, too. So it just depends on what you want. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit more to this guy. Was a little sloppy. Okay, so now the bubbles are going to start to to surface, and that's okay because we have our handy dandy straw that we're going to uh, pop those bubbles with. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna look. Hello. Okay, and I think that that's sufficiently filled. I might just be a little dangerous because I like that domed look on there. I, I just think they look more interesting when they have a nice full dome on them. And uh, Bat Boy, I think, is okay. All right, so now I have resin on my gloves. I don't want to touch my glasses. I ruined a pair of magnifiers that way by uh, not realizing I had resin on my fingers. So uh, I'm going to take this off, that one, and use my straw and very gently blow. And the bubbles pop. It's like magic. Now, with blowing on these, you want to be very gentle with it and not do a whole lot at one time. The reason is um, you can blow the resin right out. That's one. The other is your breath is hot and it makes condensation in the straw. And those little droplets of con condensation will drop right on your resin and you don't want that. So... Um, you know, just be cautious. Every maybe five minutes for the first, I would say, I babysit this usually for about a half an hour to make sure that there aren't any more bubbles arising. Because once there are bubbles and the and the uh, resin is set, you're done. You're going to have bubbles inside. So if you can live with that, that's fine. But, you know, uh, just a little bit of watching over it. Um, really is worth it. 
Okay, so let's see. Let me see here. Okay. Straw is a good idea. Yeah, you, you'll probably have to replay if you've come on here late, because um, there's a lot of information that uh, that's available. But, I mean, certainly there's more out there than I had time to look for. But, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Now, um, I will watch this, like I said, for about a half an hour. I will, uh, for a small piece like this, for just a couple of pieces like this, I just have a small uh, lid from a card box or something that I can keep uh, protecting, you know, the resin with this. If you have, like, say, for example, one of these uh, poppy buds or something that's thick, you're going to need to use that bigger um, container. Just any co any container that clears um, your pieces is is good enough and then this this has got an opening on the side there's no part of that lid so there's plenty of air space but if you have animals and pet hair you know dander and stuff flying in the air it will inevitably land in your um in your resin it's just that's just the rules it'll happen so jackie yeah there's uh there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of way you can use it a lot of ways. I've seen people use it in sterling silver, uh, in bezels. Uh, they put all kinds of different things. You know, it, it, it's just a, a matter of what you want to uh, find. I am going to search out some dried flowers. Um, I thought I had some in, in all my crap that I have around here. I thought for sure I had some dried flowers and leaves, some little pine leaves and different things that that really look cute inside captured in the resin so um i'm gonna try to scout some of that stuff up you can press your own flowers if you have uh, uh you know little flowers press them between book pages or whatever there's that there's a whole art to that too i guess but um uh yeah i mean there's just tons of stuff so Anyway, if you don't have any other questions, uh, I'll wrap it up. I do have, um, if anybody's interested, no obligation, believe me. Uh, if anybody's interested, I have a buttload of these media mixage um, resins, bezels, that, uh, that I bought before. I can put, couldn't find them anymore. So if you're interested in them, just drop me a line. And uh, I don't know. I probably have 20 packages of them here. Different, different shapes, but I mostly have, well, even these, um, there's this size. But I have a lot of, of these sizes. So... Yeah, if you're interested, just let me know. I've got them. Um, hmm. All right. Can the resin be polished if you put stone chips in it? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Jackie, but you can polish the resin. I don't know if you missed that part when I was mentioned it that I saw on the Little Windows website. Um, and I can't think of the name of the polish, but if you go on there, you'll find it. It's just a polish in a tube, and um, and you use a cloth, and you polish it, and I watched the demo, and it did a great job. It polished it all out on the top, so um, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but uh, but it does, it, it, it can be polished. Can you layer different colors? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And, oh, inlay, uh, okay, Jackie, I've never done inlay, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, you can layer, uh, Lori, you can layer a lot of different things. And um, it's just a whole other rabbit hole to go down to. 
and let's see the working time Melissa um, you probably have a good 20 minutes of working time maybe even longer but um, I try to get that all done you know relatively quickly and then sit and watch uh, for bubbles and you know okay well a couple more popped up but after a while you know after it's starting to set then you can tell when if there's a bubble and you didn't catch it in time it's it's pretty impossible to blow it out then all right let me swing down here again with the camera you can see the two projects hopefully and they will sit here I'll sit with them like I said for half an hour and then I'm gonna leave them alone until tomorrow but you know um, it's fun it's a fun thing alcohol inks yes you can um, and in little windows I noticed last night that they had a section now I didn't really look thoroughly at it so uh, I can't really tell you for sure but she did use um, she did use alcohol inks I just don't know the ratio and I think that that will interfere with the way your um, resin sets up if you use too much of, of the um, of the inks but yeah layering is is fine especially you know if the pieces are deep you could just keep going you know so okay the square copper has no sides right yes it, it has no sides it's just a plain piece of copper just a I think it was a 22 gauge which doesn't make one bit of difference what gauge it is but um yeah it just goes to the edge and as long as you're not dumping the stuff on there it self levels and um, um you know it doesn't go doesn't go anywhere so that's kind of a fun thing because it, it just opens up more possibilities so okay guys uh i think next week what i'm going to do is um make molds two-part molds so that you can see how that's done that in itself is pretty easy uh and then i am going to use some metal clay and make some little thingies out of those uh molds so uh if you have uh if you're interested in making molds if you have little charms any three-dimensional little things that you want to mush into the uh, mold you can you can make yourself up uh, some pretty cool little things let me show you of course it's not right at my fingertips because I have so much crap around here okay okay all right back again <clears throat> it wasn't too far so um this is one of the molds that I made and it's got a variety of little charms little seashell charms and leaves and clamshells and just little little objects that I pressed into the mold um, I will also give you um, resources where you can buy them already made if you so desire but um, there's tons of stuff out there so yeah we'll do that we'll do the mold making next week and uh, metal clay in the little uh, things to make little embellishments for your jewelry so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, if you have friends that would like to be on this page or in this group please um, tell them about it and uh, membership is going great I've got over 300 people in just a few short weeks and uh, I consider that pretty darn good and uh, I hope that we will interact more I hope you guys will share with the group the things that you're making and um, and we can have conversations about it and if you have any other ideas of things that you'd like me to present just send them right along and we'll go for that okay so see you guys on Facebook and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.